and Matt here. And, you know, just watched uh, Raw and, you know, I thought this was a pretty decent show. It wasn't the greatest, but it was pretty cool that I thought, well, I think that I will actually do a review. I think this, there's a lot of matches that are potential and hopefully going to come together. So, really looking forward to that. And, yeah. I was impressed. Oh, we'll see. Um, but, starting, a big cast come out. His uh, new theme music, his new attitude. Coming out and saying that... Well, same, basically it's the same thing he said on uh, Raw Talk. Saying that he's going to become the Universal Champion. He's the next... Universal Champion, he talked about the frustration that he let out beating uh, Enzo Amore uh, on Sunday. Really just classic heel material, and I think that this character is going to work. I knew it was going to work, I just didn't know how, I guess. And I don't know if it'll continue the feud, but, you know... We'll see. This brings out the big show. The big show basically manhandles Cass. Cass tries to fight back the best he could. It just didn't work out for him, no. Uh, anyways, Cass leaves, heads up to the ramp, and has a stare down with Big Show. So there's another potential feud there because of the whole past things that happened before. And so on, Cass split up. And it makes a lot of sense, too. Uh, you know, it's just a good heel turn. A, heel, a good heel tactic is going after people who are smaller than them. And then as soon as somebody at uh, their size comes around, they tend to fuck off. In this case, this is a good, a good uh, match for Cass, and we'll see how it goes. We then go to Finn Balor versus Elias Sampson. This was a feud that I thought was going to start off, maybe head into a pay-per-view that obviously didn't happen. So, for some reason they said, what the fuck, we'll have the match for free. But, really, it doesn't really mean anything because people like at the WWE Network get to watch the pay-per-views for free. So, there's really no point in saying that, but Elias Sampson seems to be someone fresh. Uh, much like an aid in English, he sings, you know, plays the guitar. It's really cool to see that. And then, of course, you got Finn Balor. There's somebody for him. And maybe down the road, he will recapture the World Championship or the Universal Championship, you know, that he never lost. So this was a pretty good match from Balor 1. But, and then we have Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, who defeated the Hardy Boys. It was, you know, another loss for the Hardy Boys. I don't understand that, you know. You would think because they lost against... Sheamus and Cesaro that they were going to win on Raw, but this didn't happen. This also brought out... I can remember those guys. The They came out, they kicked the shit out of the party boys. Um, put the shit. Anyways. Yeah. Dawson and... Uh, Can't believe I'm doing a fucking blank. Anyways, so then we had the Miz, the Misty, the Mizzies, uh, the Miz, Maurice, of course, the Mistraj were there. Uh, Miz was giving out awards. This was, I thought this was gonna suck. It wasn't that bad. And then Dean Ambrose came out, basically, and based somehow threw a chair as either. Bo Dallas or Curtis Axel. And then, of course, they beat the shit out of him. And then, uh... 
Yeah. Then uh, Seth Rollins comes out. So that's pretty cool to see those two back together. If, you know, they do... If my predictions are right, the S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion is just a, a, a half away, I guess. And then we have Sasha Banks and Bailey, who defeated Lex Bliss and Nia Jax. Now, of course, Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax are besties, I guess, backstage, whatever. But in wrestling, with their heels... But they're not, like, friends. And then it's just kind of interesting how they team together. And then, of course, you got Sasha Banks and Bailey, who are friends, who are part of the Four, uh, four Horsewomen of NXT. And this was a good match. And Bailey got in the win. Who knew? And I've been saying all along how Bailey needs to get her shit together. And there it is. That was pretty cool. Then we get this uh, interesting match that should have happened on pay per view. In fact, don't know why it didn't happen on Sunday. Gold Dust versus Our Truth. I get it. They're old. They they're veterans in the ring, but they don't fucking why they just they know because they have that history of being the Golden Truth, then breaking up, then having. The vignettes, but it is what it is. This was a good match too. I, I really enjoyed seeing Gold Dust bring the old school Gold Dust costume back. It somewhat looks a bit different, but it's basically the the old the gold dust of the old days. And uh yeah. Our truth was kinda surprising. Um but yeah. Gold Dust won this match, and I figured as such. Then we had a confrontation. Kurt Angle came out. He wanted to bring out Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. And he talked and said that there's going to be a match to determine the number one contendership for SummerSlam. And out comes Roman Reigns, and Kurt Angle's like, we. Still have to talk about what the hell will happen to Braun Strowman. And of course, Roman Reigns plays that whole... You of all people should know better because you were in the Attitude Era. And, you know, Paul Heyman was ECW. So, you fucking guys should know better. And he should praise me for what happened to Braun Strowman. And then that brought out some other Joe. And then uh, all three of them had words, exchanged words, and then... There is this number one contendership match. And then, of course, they're fighting back and forth. And Kurt Angle says, if you don't stop, you're going to fucking not have this match happen. Kurt Angle acting like the father. By the way, it was the revival I was talking about earlier. Get to Akira Tozawa and Cedric Alexander. In a 205 live match. When they defeated the champion Neville. And Noam Dar. It's the same match basically. Except Cedric Alexander was there. I liked how Alicia Fox. Did her thing. She was pretty funny. My guess. Um, it's the same old same old. I don't agree with. Having 205 live matches on Raw. But. It is what it is. Um, and then we have the main event. Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins in a rematch. I don't know why they needed the rematch. Um, Seth Rollins' eye was still bothering him. And this was, yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, they didn't need it. It was the same end result. Bray Wyatt won. Uh, this time headbutting Seth Rollins. So, Bray Wyatt wins and leaves rather mysteriously. And then we have the Mistrage come out. And they're stalking Seth Rollins and then they beat the shit out of him. And then I think uh, then Dane Ambrose comes out. 
you know, this is good only because I hope that it goes Miz versus Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental Championship. I would love to see that. I would love to see somebody else hold the title for once. If this happens, good, because I can't wait. If they're going to say, well, I only beat you up to get to Dean, then it's not going to work out well. Overall, this was, to me, a good Raw. Not a great Raw, a good Raw. I think it still needs some work to do with Seth and The Miz, with um, the SummerSlam opportunity, uh, number one contendership. Let's see where the revival go with the Hardys. You know, with the weeks to come, it's going to be fun. Just to see how it goes. And who knows? Some other shit might happen. Um, of course, at the end, we have... Actually, yeah. That was the end of the show. Kurt Angle talking to somebody. And I'm pretty sure... Then, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe... My guess is... Dixie Carter. Watch... She left TNA. I don't know why she's going to WWE. I know that there was a... A Kurt Angle documentary. Watch, I'm still watching. And Dixie Carter's on there. As a Samoa Joe and... Yeah, EJ Styles. So who knows what's going to happen there. I'm not sure why Dixie Carter would leave. Um, is this the starting of what I would assume Invasion 2? I hope not. Makes a lot of sense, though, because you have TNA wrestlers now on WWE territory. Well, I'll have to wait and see. I hope it's not true, but who knows. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Bye.